The GE McKinsey Matrix was developed in the 1970s after General Electric asked its consultant McKinsey to develop a portfolio management model. This matrix is a strategy tool that provides guidance on how a corporation should prioritize its investments among its large number of business units, leading to four possible scenarios. Invest, Protect, Harvest, and Divest. The GE McKinsey Matrix is fundamentally a portfolio analysis tool. That is, it compares groups of products with their competitive power and market attractiveness. The portfolio themselves are comprised of a full suite of services and products that a business offers to the market. In the context of General Electric, the matrix was created so that the company could analyze the composition for each of its 150 portfolios otherwise known as Strategic Business Units, or SBU. Ultimately, the GE McKinsey Matrix allows a large, decentralized company to determine where best to invest its cash. It does this by allowing the company to judge each SBU on its own merits according to metrics which determine future viability. The Matrix comprises of two axes. The competitive strength of the individual SBUs is represented on the x-axis, with market attractiveness represented on the y-axis. Both competitive strength and market attractiveness are determined by a weighted score calculated from the relevant factors that apply to each cell. Each parameter is further divided into three categories, low, medium, and high, which creates a matrix with a total of nine cells. These nine cells are then divided by a diagonal line, running from the bottom left to the top right of the matrix. When a product is placed on the matrix, its position relative to the diagonal line determines the strategy that should be used. In other words, products that fall above the diagonal line are high performance with high growth or cash flow potential. Conversely, products that fall below the line have little potential for growth and are costing the company money to sell. Before any business can plot their products on the matrix, they must first define both competitive advantages and industry attractiveness. Competitive advantages may include market share and growth in market share, profit margins, cash flow, and manufacturing costs, as well as brand equity and customer loyalty. On the other hand, industry attractiveness includes market size and the potential for growth, buyer and supplier power, as well as the potential for new entrance or substitution with another product. As we touched on earlier, the position a product occupies on the matrix drives future strategy. There are three primary recommendations to consider, with two being separate yet similar to the other. A growth strategy is prudent when a product has a competitive advantage in an attractive market. Investment in growth and a focus on maintaining strengths is a priority. Profitability can also be increased with an emphasis on productivity. A hold strategy occurs when a product has both average competitive advantage and market attractiveness. Here, businesses should invest in segments with high profitability and low risk while also minimizing their weaknesses. If the product is at a competitive disadvantage and resides in an unattractive industry, a harvest strategy should be employed. Investments should be minimized at all costs, and assets should be sold when cash value is highest. The harvest strategy also ensures that low viability products do not negatively impact on other highly viable areas of a portfolio. When the competitive strength of the business unit and the intrinsic attractiveness of the industry are low, the option to undertake is divestment. In this way, the resources can be reallocated to focus on more strategic areas that can help gain a competitive advantage. Overall, the GE McKinsey Matrix is a 9-cell portfolio matrix originally developed for GE as a means of screening their large portfolio of strategic business units. The main drivers for its product portfolio is its competitive strength and market attractiveness. Ultimately, the position of a product on the matrix decides whether the business should continue to focus on growth or on minimizing investment and selling.